Well, it's winter, it's cold, it's been raining, but fish are always feeding. So what I'm going to show you is how I fish a commercial fishery for silverfish. Commercial silverfish fishing does not get any better than that. I have two simple plans when I'm fishing. In the summer, I like to start long, finish short. In other words, you start maybe to an island or the open water, finish in the side. But in the winter, it's completely different. You start short and usually you've got to finish long. The fish back off, they don't want to feed, so they back off a little bit more. So your short line might be 10, 11 metres, but you can bet your bottom dollar that through the day, the fish will back off if they don't want to feed and you've got to follow and find the fish. I've plumbed up here at Sykehouse Fisheries already and it's very deep, which is good, I think, for, for winter fishing. And all I'm going to do, I'm going to start probably on my pole at 13 metres and I'm going to work and try and find the fish around there. And if I can't find them early at that place, I'm going to fish a little feeder, probably 20 metres, just past it, try and draw some fish in and hopefully the fish then will move on to my ground bait. But I'm always wary of, if I don't get a few bites, I might have to put another section on, just go past the ground bait that I'm going to put in, the base I'm going to put in, because that's what happens in the winter. The fish back off feed and you've got to find the fish and follow the fish. So how am I going to approach it? Well, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to mix some ground bait. And I'm, why am I mixing ground bait in winter? Simple, skimmers. I want the skimmers to come over at my bed of ground bait. And if I put loose feed in, it's not always the best. But I've heard that I can put ground bait in. In the summer, I like a strong fish meal based ground bait. But in the winter, when it's cold, they don't want that fish meal. You want a low key ground bait. And my favourite one's that one, the F1 Dark. It's a black ground bait, so it's going to be on the bottom with not a lot of feed content. And I think the fish are comfortable coming over and swimming over it to pick up your loose offerings that you're going to put in. So what loose offerings am I going to put in? In the winter, I'd probably always feed the micros. I might put a big two and one on the hook to try it, especially if I start catching some bigger bream. But my feed, I want it two and one micros. Remember, the fish don't need a lot of feed. You only need a little bit. So all I've done, I've mixed my ground bait and I've got a sprinkling of the micros, two in ones, straight out the bag. You don't have to soak them. And I know with that balance of that ground bait and these two in one micros, the fish will come in, the home, they'll home over it, and be very comfortable. I know that from experience that it works with skimmers and it works with roach. And just remember this, in the winter, you can kill your peg in the first cast by putting too much bait in. You can kill your peg for the rest of the day. Now, winter fishing, right, is difficult at best of times. Location of fish, the water goes clear. When the water goes clear, okay, the fish don't feed the same. They back off and they shoal up and everything like that. And it doesn't tell when you've got two plant pots or oh, take it behind camera running up and down all day, chasing all the fish. No wonder fish keep moving further. But that's what happens. So when you're fishing it winter and you, you're walking about, you'll just scare your peg. You'll scare other people's peg. It's the worst thing you can do in the winter. It really is. They're nice fish, these. Look at that. That's four ounce, that. Right, well, come here. Let's try to get away. And that is a little four ounce roach and lovely fishing. I don't always use them in summer, but in winter, I'll always have my pole support up. It does two reasons. One, if you're feeding it, you can feed to the same spot all the time. Your accuracy is fantastic. So if I get a ball of ground bait and I go like that, and you can see that it's full of two in ones, I can put that in and I ship it out nice and steady. When I get to the pole support, where I'm going to hold it, put it in the in your box on your thing and put it on your pole support, pick the target that you're going to aim to and just tip it over on that spot. And just take your time and do it nice and steady. That's all you've got to do. It's exactly where I want it. So that when I'm fishing 
and I pick my rig up to fish and I put the bait on when I ship out I ship it out and I know the spot that I'm going to be fishing I know the exact line and all I'm going to do then is put my olivet on the spot and I'm going to put the flow exactly where that ground bait or that bait went in I'm going to put it down, I'm going to lower it down like that when it settles I can put it on the bar and you can either take your hands off or you can just sit like that but it does two things one it puts your bait on the bait that you fed exactly where it is but most importantly in my opinion your float doesn't move how many times have you sat there and you thought oh my float's moved off my line it's moved off your bait it's moved away and if your bait's moving you won't catch a fish you won't catch a fish so by having it on a pole support your flow and your bait will be stood exactly over your bait trust me you'll get better presentation you'll get more bites and you'll catch more fish So what I'm going to do on the pole, I'm going to fish long. I'm going to fish 13 metres to start with. That's going to be, be my starting line. I've plumbed up and it's about 11 to 12 foot deep. It's very deep, it's quite a deep fishery. And wherever I've plumbed up to 6 metres, it's the same depth. So it's like a snooker table to be honest with you. So I don't know whether that's the, the normal procedure in, in the lake or I just got lucky, I don't know. But basically one rig does all. But does it? I'm setting one at a gram and one at a gram and a half, just in case the wind gets up. But it's all about the depth. Would I set a gram up if it was six foot deep? No, I wouldn't. It would be a little bit less. But all I try and do is fish the size of the float to the conditions that allows you to do it. Silverfish feed differently to carp, especially roach and skimmers, because most fish come in, pick your bait up and swim off. Carp come in and they suck it all up. It's a bit different. When I'm fishing for silvers, I want the, the bottom two foot, the, the bait falling through, and I want my hook bait to fall through it, because I'll catch more fish. So my bulk, in this case, is two foot above my hook. And in that two foot then, I have three number 10 droppers. Anything above three quarter of a gram, I always have an olivette on. So I am not putting too many shot on the line. And I know when that olivette settles, that then is going to fall through with them three droppers. I'm going to fish two inches over depth because it's the winter and it'll fall and just rest on the bottom. And with silverfish fishing, that's what I try and do, is make the bait work in the last two foot. It's winter. You've got to fish things a bit finer. You can fish a bit finer because the fish don't fight as, as hard. And remember, we're fishing for silvers as well. So we set up my hook lens. It's going to be an F1 at size 18 and it's going to be tied to an 010 bottom. It's as simple as that. 010 to an 18, you won't go far wrong. Sometimes if you're fishing for a fuel fish, you might have to scale down to a 20 and you might have to put a, a, like an 08 on or something like that. But when you're fishing for skimmers and you're fishing for a fuel brief, you want something with a little bit more give. So I use 010 to a size 18 hook. My main line's 014. So my main line's 14, my hook length is going to be 010. But because I'm fishing nice and fine and I'm fishing for silvers, the elastic comes into play because all I'm going to use is like a four to six elastic, which is yellow zip. I quite like that, a number six elastic. Because it's, it's hollow, it makes it a bit softer so you can get away with it a bit better. If it were a six hard, it might be a little bit too much, but because it's a six soft, you can, it stretches a little bit better. And that's my simple setup. It's as simple as that, really. The light, especially in the winter, can be very deceiving because of the sun being low. Sometimes it's behind you, sometimes it's in front of you, and sometimes a nice bright orange tip is perfect. But sometimes you can't see it, no matter what the light's like. When the water is flat and there's no shadows or anything on it, the best colour is black. All I do is get your float and just blacken it off, basically, and you won't believe the difference from seeing that and not being able to see an orange some days.
One of the great things about commercial silverfish fishing is usually uh, a lot of carp as well in the place. They don't always feed it winter, but sometimes when they're in the peg, it's hard to catch silvers. And like today, I'm, you know, I've caught some silvers and it, and it goes dead quiet and you know that there's, there's something in your peg. Because you've got a number six elastic in, when you hook a carp, it takes a while to, to get out. Now, a lot of people who silverfish, they don't use puller bungs and puller kits for for this kind of thing. So sometimes when you get a big one like what I've got at the moment, what I'm doing now, I'm going to put, because I won't be able to net it, the next section in, a number five, which, which will... What I can do then, I can net the fish. So all I'm doing is adding an extra section because of the, the, the elastic number six is stretching so much. And then I can work my way up like that. And what it's doing, it's going to get the fish to the top quicker and hopefully I can net it. That, it's come, that's brought it to the top because I'm over the fish now. And of course, pleasure fishing, it's great fun. But in matches when they're not allowed, it's so frustrating. So you want to get them out of your peg as quick as you can. So you're looking for things like puller kits, extra section pulling on so you can shorten the elastic and do it that way. Oh, that was my chance. Bad angling. Bad angling. The bad angling police were out then. There you go. Yellow Foker! Hey! <laughs> There you go, Matt Nicholas Skimmer. Right, what we've done is we've come shorter. And the reason why we've come shorter is because the far line, the 13 metre line, has become solid with carp, which happens at winter sometime. But what I've also done on the far line, the 13 metre line, I've put a couple of balls of ground bait with two and one micros. Two reasons. One, hopefully it'll keep the carp out there because I don't want them coming on this line. And secondly, um, it, they might go and, and skimmers will, will rest on it. So I've come short at about seven metres, which is the same depth. And I've been loose feeding two and one micros over that. And we've come on it, we've started catching roach and hybrids and, and nod fish. Because I'm after that type of species, I want the bait falling through the water. And I've started catching roach and, uh, and hybrids and it's nice fishing to be honest with you. Oh, look at that nice little uh, Janey roach there, look. There we go. Oh, look at that. Nice four, six ounce roach. And a little, little white fuca. Uh, little Janie roaches, them. Little Janies. So I bet you're wondering why I'm calling them Janies. Well, when we were kids at school, there were a, a young lady in our class and they called her Jane Roach. That were her name. So every roach we ever caught, as kids, we caught them, called them Janies. So if you ever hear me say I've had five Janies, I've caught five roach. And that's how we got, they got the name Janies, because there were a young lass in our class called Janie Roach. No, I, sp no, no, I know who she is. That, that's not a name now. She married one of my mates. <laughs> Uh, she married one of my mates, Jack Pike. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, she married one of my mates. Well, at the moment it's solid with roach and little hybrids and odd little skimmer. But on this short line now, it's absolutely crackers. But in my head, I'm conscious of these skimmers coming along. Now, I've been pestered with carp on that long line and that's why I've had to come on the short line but I'm definitely going to have a little go because it's nearly skimmer o'clock at the moment and what I've got to hope is that them carp have, have moved and uh, and skimmers have moved in but if you're going to catch any skimmers it's going to be in the last hour what you've got to do is be ready for that last hour in other words 
get your pole rollers right, get your setup right, get your bait right, get your feeding right out there, get yourself organised. There's nothing worse than striking to a fish, go like that, your roller falls over, take extra care. If you're not catching, make sure everything's ready and organised for that last hour. All oh, right. Well, just like we said, I thought it might be last hour at day. That's typical skimmer time. And them carp have gone, but they're moving up ground bait now. We've had a couple of skimmers, and this is another one. Oh yeah, look at that pound and a half. Oh, <laughs> white folker, get in there. I've not seen these all day. I've caught roach and hybrids, and I've not seen a skimmer until last hour but they've moved in on that ground bait and the micros as I put down at start and I'm catching skimmers now between a pound and two pound it's been lovely fishing so I've caught roach hybrid short line and some nice skimmers and carp on the far line well that's a fantastic day commercial silverfish fishing it don't get any better than that caught skimmers hybrids roach caught two carp and that's the problem sometimes when you're fishing long the carp moved in and I got two of them and then eventually they went then I caught these big skimmers on long line. The best bait today were the micros, the white and the yellow ones. I couldn't really make my mind up between the two, so I kept alternating them. But that is a fantastic day's fishing. There you go, my little beauties. Look at them. Big smile. Booker!